What I want to do today is just give a bit of an update on um, this program that's being funded uh, through the MLA Donor Company in partnership with uh, the New South Wales Government, which is the LLS Northwest team, um, OptiWay, CBA Labs, um, and the University of Sydney. Um, the project is called Data Driven Systems, so we're really looking at how we can integrate lots of diff different data sets to um, optimise how we use the forage base. Um, the focus of this project is really looking at paddock productivity or pasture productivity or forage productivity from an animal live weight gain perspective because um, we have lots of great pasture modelling um, tools out there um, and what we know is that we can collect a lot of information on pastures around their nutritional value, their biomass, um, but it doesn't always translate into how the animal performs. And, um, as, as well, in, in a beef production sense, that's what we get paid on. Um, uh, we are graziers down at Werris Creek, uh, and this was obviously a photo from Better Times. Um, and, it, and it really just, well, some of the work we were doing with OptiWay at the time really got us thinking about how we can actually look at productivity across the paddocks on our farms from a live weight gain perspective. Um, so I'm sure all of you know what an OptiWay system is and what it looks like. Um, essentially, it's an, a voluntary way station, infield way station, um, and it, it provides us with this really great um, ability to collect regular live weights from our livestock um, as we move them in a rotation across our farms. Um, there's a lot of work we did using static weights, but obviously everyone knows some of the limitations around that if you want regular live weights on your herd. Um, obviously the OptiWay um, doesn't necessarily weigh 100% of your herd, but we've done a lot of work um, validating some of the data that comes out of these systems. So I thought I'd just share some of that background work with you. Um, firstly, when you compare it to static weight, um, we did a, a trial over about four months at our um, at the university's beef farm at, at Spring Ridge, um, and we met, we monitored a hundred uh, about a hundred heifers um, over about three to four months, and we we just looked at their growth rates. So we weighed them fortnightly across the static scales, and we had an opti weigh out in the paddock with them, and it was um, about ninety seven percent correlated to the static weight system. Uh, when they were lighter, it slightly overweighed them, and when they were heavier, it slightly underweighed them. Um, but you get similar variation um, with gut fill and that sort of thing across your static scale. So we're really confident uh, in the performance and um, of the system. Um, we also know that it's not affected by the size of the animal, um, the breed of the animal, um, or the sex. So we get a, a range of animals across all um, the whole bell curve of your, your weight range in your herd will, will get across the scales. So you're not getting it skewed. So even though you're not weighing 100% of your herd, you're getting a really good accurate depiction of the ADG of your herd across time. This looks really messy. Don't worry, you don't have to know what all those lines are. Essentially, what we can do with that data is we've created a model where we can actually derive an individual live weight for every animal for every day across time, because obviously with the OptiWay system, you don't necessarily get every animal every day attending the system. So we've got a model, um, we derived a model that, um, that can actually predict the live weight for each individual animal across time. Um, and this is just one of the studies that we did um, looking at the, the growth of animals. And with that data, with that individual live weight data, we can do um, a lot more in terms of the, the predictive abilities um, of the data sets. So this, this program that we're, we're currently working on sort of stemmed from um, some data that we got out of our DigiFarms project that was being run with some commercial farms uh, in partnership with LLS. Um, and what we were doing with DigiFarms was just looking at the value, um, the value proposition of different technologies uh, for farmers um, across the northwest of, of um, New South Wales. So we had an OptiWay out on, on a partner farm and his, his farm was really great because he separated a whole thing up into equal equally sized blocks. So every every block was, I think it was either 25 hectares or 25 acres, I can't remember. I think it was 25 hectares. And they were all sown to the same sort of subtropical species. We were coming out of sort of March through winter. So um, we weren't getting, you know, great productivity out of those subtropicals. But um, for management purposes, he just did seven day um, grazings of each of these paddocks and moved them around. So 
um, we, we just pulled the data and wanted to look at what we were seeing. And what we found was that there was a difference in the productivity of each of those paddocks. And obviously, there's lots of factors that might, um, might, might contribute to that. But it made us think about um, how we can actually use that information, that ADG data, within each of those paddocks to start to understand what's driving that divergence in performance. What we also found, um, and again, uh, what you're seeing here is the, the, those modelled um, individual live weights for each of the animals. What we also found was that um, each of these, is one of these laser pointers? Yeah. Each of these um, dot dashed lines is um, the start of a new rotation. So what we found was that, you know, obviously, beginning of the seven days, they're, they're grazing all the really high protein um, parts of the paddock, whether that's things like liver seed or all the other green bits that are growing in between the dried off tropicals. Um, and then obviously that, that drops off over time. So we were seeing a pretty consistent pattern within each of those um, paddocks, even though obviously the performance was changing. This is ADG, by the way, not, not live weight. So live weight gain. Um, and we were basically, um, we were able to look at sort of the effective time. And so it made us start thinking about how we can inform grazing decisions and um, you know how long you have a, uh, an animal or uh, animals in a paddock or how how you can optimize that that grazing um, those grazing rotations because you're obviously going to be affecting um, the productivity the longer you keep them in the paddock so um, this MLA project um, is working predominantly with commercial partner sites so um, that we had an enrollment um, process with, with Northwest LLS team. Um, we've got seven partner sites across the whole Northwest region, all the way up from sort of Moree uh, down to sort of Spring Ridge. We've got our UCID farm in it as well. Um, and we've put OptiWay units out on all of those sites. Um, we've got a bunch of enrollment information, but we're also tracking grazing management um, and all of the different practices just to get an understanding of how different practices might influence um, the, the, the data that we're collecting um, from the OptiWay systems. Um, we're also, we're inputting a bunch of different data sources. So uh, one of these amazing tools, and I don't know how many of you use this, but um, we've got the seed um, resource from New South Wales government, which provides you with soil classifications for your farm. Uh, and so what we're trying to do is access as much sort of um, internet of things data that we can to plug into this model so that it can, it can be dynamic, whoever wants to use this model or however, whatever system this model plugs into. We're not, we're not creating a platform or anything, we're just creating the, the algorithm model. Um, and so you can actually import um, the soil data sets from these systems. Um, and there's a few different things, but this, this, this uses the Australian soil classification maps for New South Wales. We've also put climate um, stations in each of the properties. Um, this is a couple of our uh, Bangladeshi PhD students who came up from Sydney to do a bit, bunch of feed sampling, and um, it was great for them to experience life in the northwest of New South Wales, very different from Bangladesh. So they helped us put in some of our systems and um, collect some forage samples. Um, this just shows um, very little rainfall in the rain gauge, which I'm sure you guys are all familiar with. Um, but we're, we're collecting um, a range of climate information near those OptiWay systems to help us account for what that, um, the climate inputs on that variation. And actually, Faisal here, one of our PhD students, he's working with the, the whole national network of OptiWay systems and using BOM climate data to look at how changes in climate influence growth patterns. Um, and we're getting some really exciting data out of that that could link into this as well. Um, so the OptiWay data, the OptiWay systems have been set up from about March this year and obviously we were going into a non-growing season so a lot of the, and the, you know, all this climate stuff that we've been talking about is so relevant because it's kind of made it a very challenging time to start this project looking at pasture growth models and that sort of thing. But um, a lot of the producers that we're working with were obviously using winter forage crops. Um, but this is just an example of what what kind of the data looks like on the OptiWay um, platform or the app that you might use. So um, you get a raw weight and obviously you're not getting every animal every day. So you don't want to take every individual um, data point um, as your hard data set. 
So you've got a rolling mob average here, um, which gives you sort of how your herd is performing over time. Um, and you also get this information, which sort of talks about your attendance levels, which animals, how many animals are attending. And, and you can start to think about, oh, one of the patterns that we're looking at is how what's in the paddock affects how much they're attending the OptiWay stations. Um, we're using, um, my research officer calls it the crack cocaine mix in the OptiWays, which is a high molasses sort of really tasty lick, um, dry lick mix to try and get as many animals across the system um, each day. And so you get um, you get these sort of the the weight count of your animal, but also how many animals you're getting each day and your records per animal. So what we find is there's some animals that repeatedly attend and maybe others that don't. Um, that might only come on once or twice. So it gives you a good idea, kind of just in terms of general animal monitoring, what's going on with your herd. Um, and this is a sort of a daily report thing that you get in your email and, and um, or texted to your phone or on your phone app. Um, it gives you uh, an idea, really what we look at a lot is how many animals are being weighed and what percentage of the mob. Um, in this mob, uh, there was, I think, around four... 300 or 400 animals in this mob. So um, over time, we were getting about 66%. Um, and then you can get, you can have a look at your ADGs, and that changes based on whether you're taking animals out of the herd, putting animals in, starting a new session. So um, again, you got to be careful how you interpret this information unless you're staying on top of um, changing those sessions. But we use all the raw data that comes out of the back of it. So um, it's, it's been a really useful tool for farmers as they've sort of um, been looking at their, their oats crop usage and kind of pushing it as far as they can because we've had a bit of a tough season. Um, and I think hopefully we'll get some other work that we can do out of it looking at drought preparedness. Um, so other, other data that we're collecting, so we're looking at forage-based data obviously to help train that algorithm with what we know with all of these plant, uh, plant modeling systems. So we've got uh, Stringy Bark Ecological, they're doing biodiversity monitoring because we're actually really interested in if someone changes their management practices, how the plant species um, diversity in those paddocks changes across time. Um, so if you might make, make changes to your grazing intensity or, or your um, durations, how does that actually change the, the biodiversity in your pastures? Um, we're collecting feed samples, so we're just using um, a pretty standard feed sampling technique um, across each of the paddocks on each of the sites, trying to get around pre and post grazing information. Um, and we're sending that off to Feed Central. And we're using the SIBO Labs Pasture Biomass Collector app. So um, you, it, it GPS locates those feed samples and we're correlating that to the SIBO Labs data, which I'll talk about on the next slide. So we're trying to collate again as much of that internet of things data. Um, so we don't need to do as much of this um, forage sampling in the future and training a model that does it automatically. So each of our properties has access to a SIBO Labs pasture key account. And I know you've probably all seen the Australian feed-based monitor um, and it works on, I think, a, a one hectare or a 10 hectare um, resolution. We have 10 by 10 meters um, re resolution with the pasture key accounts. And you can see up here, um, you know, this is one thing we get out of it, which is total stranding dry matter estimates. And we're kind of feeding all of our forage information into that to help ground truth what they're collecting. But it helps us also use this data to try and identify where those high and low performing paddocks are from a, from a biomass perspective and correlate it to what we're seeing in the OptiWay data in terms of a live weight gain perspective. And then start to try and understand what are those factors that are driving that divergence. So right now we're in this data collection stage and we've, we've now got quite a lot of weight data. We've got the um, SIBA labs and feed based data. So we're in the first stage of model development to start to firstly look at that divergence across the different paddocks on our, on our different properties and account for, for the different um, spatial locations of those properties and, and the different climatic conditions. Um, we're not able right now to look at those seasonal and temporal changes and we'll see what happens. A lot of our 
um, producers have had to sell wieners as we're all in the similar conditions, markets dropping off, um, got to feed animals. Uh, so we'll, we'll just see what we can do over the next few months with the producers that we have. Um, and we'll start to build that model, try and, start, try and understand um, how that animal live weight change can help us predict paddock performance into the future, and then start testing it um, and adapting it as we collect more data across seasons and across time, um, once we get some rain again, hopefully. Um, but I guess I, that's, uh, that's an overview of where we're, where we're at with this project. Um, we have an amazing project team, particularly Amanda Graff, who does all of our hard data collection going out onto all of our farms. Naomi Hobson from LLS, our University of Sydney team, and a big thanks to, to Bill and Phil from SIBO Labs and OptiWay because they've, they've really helped a lot with some of the data extraction. And of course, all of our partner sites um, and MLA. But um, this project is going on for the next three years. Um, we're really keen to get feedback and kind of input um, what other information might be relevant. So please get in touch if you're interested and we'll probably be signing on new partner sites as we go, as we go forward. So we're always interested in collaborating with, with um, new producers in the future. Thank you. I guess one of the questions I have that I get a different answer every time is kind of what, what do you currently use to make those move on decisions? Are you using um, obviously experience, but are you using any physical tools or what kind of estimates are you using and, and how would you see those kind of improving? I don't need you to answer now, but that's something I'd really like to get more information on as well. Sabrina, what will be the output for producers? What will, what will they, will be sort of guidance in understanding? Yeah, um, what we're looking at developing is, is, a, is an actual model that will plug into some of these already existing systems. So maybe Ag360 or maybe AgriWeb. Um, you know, a lot of our, um, you know, OptiWay and Siebel Labs are already working with AgriWeb. Um, and what, we'll, what it will do is allow you to plug in your location and some of your animal information. So that's why it works really well with those existing um, farm management systems. Um, and because we're going to be trying to draw from all of these existing um, data sets online, like the soils and the climate um, and the um, SIBO Labs data, it'll start to be able to, to, to learn your um, historic biomass production. If you have an OptiWay system, that's great because you can have that live weight information. But what we want to develop is the model that then predicts how much performance you're going to get and helps you understand whether you're optimizing your pasture utilization. Maybe your, your animals are on there too long. Maybe they're not on there long enough to optimize the kilograms of live weight that you're targeting. So um, being able to have that predictive ability in terms of paddock performance is really where we want to end up with this model. Um, but yeah, we, we really have to see what, what kind of um, data we can collect to help feed into that. And we want it to be a plug-in. We don't want to develop a new type of software. I think there's plenty of those around already. What percentage of animals do you need to pr produce reliable results based on numbers per day, percentage per day, or percentage per week? That's a really good question. Um, it depends on what kind of information you're trying to get out of the data. So. We've actually found that with 30%, and depending on how big your mob is. So the bigger your mob is, the lower proportion of animals are going to go through that. Um, but even with 30%, you're going to get an accurate depiction of the spread of live weight across your herd. So if you're trying to make decisions around targeting a sales point, um, joining, um, uh, increasing your supplementary feed to reach your targets, you can do that with around 30% of your mob. Um, if you're trying, if you want to get a, a live weight for every animal every day, you know, OptiWay systems are not ideal for that. So some people want to track individual animal live weights. You've got walkover weigh scales and that sort of thing for that. Um, but they're just not as flexible in terms of moving them around paddocks. Um, and there's some other, other reasons why we've chosen to work with the, the OptiWay systems in this particular um, project. Question here from Mike. Oh, thanks. Yep. Um, just to comment there, as we've been using the uh, the OptiWay with um, the benefit uh, <coughs> of Sydney Uni, thank you very much. 
Um, there's two benefits that I've seen from it. One is reduced stress on the animals by not having to run them across the scales, through the yards, etc. when we're trying to get them to a, a weight where we want to market them. Uh, but probably the most important area is the critical weighting mate, achieving a critical weighting mate for our heifers. Um, so we'll see that coming up, getting that average, getting the maximum and the minimum, and <clears throat> then we can identify the ones that are not, take them into the yard, identify the ones that haven't reached that critical mating weight and take them off. And we are currently running, as a consequence of the last drought, uh, two uh, joining periods, two calving periods. We'll take those back end of the, of the heifers off and we'll, we'll put them into uh, that later that later joining so we've uh, we've definitely seen some uh, some advantages particularly uh, with our heifers on using the OptiWay.